Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Richard Stevenson and I'm the director of Stevenson Dental Solutions. We are a teaching center in San Dimas, California that focuses on excellence and hands-on courses to improve your skills and knowledge in general dentistry. And today we're going to be discussing the PFM preparation for a premolar on Acadental Tooth Number 4, introducing a technique that I call the T-Prep technique. And this is just a method of reducing outer portions of the preparation so you can make measurements on how much you've taken away. The T stands for tenon in this particular case, and this is a technique used in carpentry. So let's see if we can apply that technique to a preparation in dentistry and see how well that can work for us. So the tooth we're going to use today is tooth number four in the Acadental Typenon. I'm just marking the tooth so that you'll see which tooth I'll be working on and give me a reminder of where to put the burr when I'm shooting the video. We'll start with the 847 KR-016 and we'll start with the C-plane. I like to hold the burr parallel to the triangular ridge. I'm going to speed it up here a little bit so you can see the plane reduction technique that I've utilized in previous videos is being utilized here to, again we're measuring to see if we've got 1.5 millimeters with the RGS-4. We don't, so let's keep going. You know, some schools are asking for 2 millimeters, some are asking for 1.5, so I'm going to prep this with a range of 1.5 to 2 millimeters. So this is the T-prep variation. What we're going to do with this variation is we're going to leave this little portion in the middle and this is going to serve to remind us on how much reduction we actually made during the preparation. Once again checking frequently with the RGS-4. We'll now start with the functional cusp bevel, or the A-plane. I like to keep the A-plane parallel to the C-plane for the most part. And of course, speeding it up here so you can see the final result. So we can see here how the tenons are providing you with a nice reference on how much tooth structure has been removed. It's a little bit like using a preoperative putty guide that you've cut in half sagittally or in the buccolingual direction. And I've utilized this technique clinically and it's worked out incredibly well. Sometimes it's hard to see how much you've reduced, even when you're using a preoperative guide. But when you're working on the tooth and you're using portion of the tooth to provide you with this information, it's surprisingly easy to see how much you've taken away. Here we're placing the B-plane. We want to angle the burr in such a way that we align the cusp tips of the unprepared teeth adjacent. And once again, not touching that middle portion, that tenon. And once again, I'm just going to speed up the video a little bit so that you can see the final result. We're still using the same burr, 847KR016. I just use a pencil here to highlight the intersection between the tenon and the prepared surface. So you can see how much you've taken away. On the facial, because this is a PFM, I'm going to go ahead and use the exact same diamond that we've been using all along, the 847KR016. And we're going to extend this T prep technique all the way down to the gingival. Let's go ahead and speed up the video.
It's amazingly helpful to leave this little section unprepared in the middle. It really provides you with a lot of information about how to hold the burr as well. So while we're holding the burr, we're going to be angling it differently as we reduce that facial. More in a vertical manner near the gingival, and a little bit more angled as we go up towards the occlusal. Let me just draw on here so you can see the intersection between the tenon and the unprepared surface. And you get a really good idea of where you're under-reduced. I don't think you could do that so easily if you didn't have the tenon in position. This is the 878K012. And this will be used for the lingual axial reduction. We're using this smaller diamond here because this is going to be metal and porcelain not just porcelain all the way down to the gingival. So we'll probably have a metal collar on this preparation that'll be anywhere from one millimeter to three millimeters in dimension. One of the nice things about the 878K is it's great for creating taper. We're gonna go ahead and speed up the video again. For those of you taking examinations, sometimes you're not allowed to close the type on together to check the collusion. I think I would suggest that this technique would be very helpful for those situations. I'm using the 878K to break through the proximal right now, but you could use an 859-010, a needle-shaped burr to break through as well, or other burrs that are pretty narrow. Now it's just a matter of blending those axial walls to make them continuous. You want to hold the handpiece so that it's following the long axis of the preparation. You know, with so many requirements these days from laboratories, for the materials that we're using, whether it be PFM, lithium desilicate, whether it's a milled composite type product or zirconia, and there are so many specific measurements, it's a little bit hard to know how much you've reduced if you don't have some kind of reference point. And of course, a guide can be utilized or depth cuts, things like that. But this is kind of an inverse depth cut, isn't it? Whatever you see undercuts, you want to go ahead and remove those with the same diamond burr. If you're a dental student, most schools are going to ask you to have your finish line somewhere between 0.5 and 1 millimeter adjacent to the gingiva. You can easily see where you've under-reduced by looking at the tenon with respect to the prepared surfaces. You visualize the A-plane, the B-plane, and the C-plane very easily with this technique. See that little bump there in the middle of the facial? That gives a really good idea where we need to make some adjustments. I would not do this during an examination because you can see very easily. I'm doing it here just for the video. Let's go ahead and close the type on together 
and see what this looks like in occlusion. I think at this point, after you've refined the walls and you've gotten the margins the way you want them, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and measure everything carefully. Once again, using the RGS4, which is 1.5. You can see that I'm more than 1.5 reduced in that area on the facial, and maybe just a little bit under in some areas. So it gives you a good idea where you need to make some corrections. This is the RGS3, which is one millimeter. Most schools want you to be somewhere between 1 and 1.2 millimeters of facial shoulder. Clinically, I think that those dimensions are, are quite good. Now I'm going to utilize a KS0F here just to remove the tenon. It's served its purpose, and we know we've reduced that adequate amount for the material that we've designed for this particular case. So now it's just a matter of just removing this little tenon from the occlusal, the facial, and the lingual. Really easy to do. The 8877009 is a terrific diamond for finessing gold finish lines. It really produces a beautiful chamfer for you. So since I'm removing the tenon on the lingual and I want this to be a, show, a chamfer, excuse me, I'm going to utilize this chamfer burr in this particular area. The 8847KR016 is a diamond that is analogous to the 847KR, and since I'm going to be refining the facial and making this as smooth as I can, I want to use a 30 micron grit diamond and not a coarse diamond. Sometimes you can use the burr obliquely to remove irregularities tends to work really well. Some people might want to use an electric handpiece at maybe 5,000 RPM or perhaps an air-driven slow speed with a friction grip attachment. I'm just using the high speed here at very stall out speed. If you have a hatchet or a bin angle chisel or an off angle chisel, you can use that to remove any irregularities off the facial very easily. As long as the instrument is sharp, it works quite well. The shoulder should really extend from one line angle on the mesial to another line angle on the distal, or a little bit further beyond that. When you do that, you're going to leave these little wings. I think the wings are okay to leave, but I typically remove them because I like to have a little bit more of a smooth flowing outline of the final preparation. When you're getting near the end, this is the time to be really critical. So take a look at any area that looks like it might be undercut or underreduced. I'm just making those notations right now and pointing them out with the pencil and then we'll just modify them. I would never use a coarse spur at this point because we're really near the end of the preparation. So let's stay with the fine diamonds for this remaining portion. So we can measure now with the RGS3, which is one millimeter, and see that we have approximately one millimeter facial shoulder, a little bit more maybe, and 
chamfer design on the lingual. The technique seems to work pretty well. And like I said, I've used it clinically a bunch of times. I thought maybe it's a good idea to share it with you. And I hope that you enjoyed this particular technique, the T-Prep tech design. And I'm going to apply this to other preparations. You can basically do it on anterior teeth, posterior teeth, on virtually any preparation you do for crowns or bridges. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you try the T-Technique. All the best.